So, uh, many people remember what occurred in 2004, that long lines uh, on election day uh, disenfranchised thousands of voters across the state. Um, in response to that, uh, the Ohio General Assembly enacted uh, what's known as uh, early, early in-person voting, meaning that folks can vote prior to election day. When they did this, they also established something called same-day registration. And that means that a person can go to their local uh, uh, county board of elections and uh, register and vote at the same time. Um, so there were two rights that were bestowed upon uh, Ohio voters. That was uh, same-day registration and early voting. Uh, many counties, uh, the years following the establishment of early voting, uh, uh, created uh, hours outside of business hours. Um, several counties throughout the state had uh, uh, provided early in-person voting in the evenings. Many provided early in-person voting hours on Sundays. Um, and uh, Ohio voters began to rely on, on those times. Um, for instance, in uh, the counties that had Sunday voting, uh, African-American communities would use that time uh, to bring um, uh, uh, church congregations to the polls. This is an effort that's called Souls to the Polls. Um, also, many working class individuals would rely on evening hours because they, they, they're working nine to five when, when the, the county board of election is, is open. So, back in uh, late 2013, a bill was introduced to cut the same day registration period. That bill moved very quickly, and in February of this year, 2014, um, the General Assembly passed a bill that cut uh, same-day registration. Within a very short period, the governor uh, signed that bill into law. And just a few days after that, our Secretary of State um, uh, issued what's known as a directive, which is simply an order to all county boards of elections that uh, they could not be open in the evenings or on Sundays, the very times that African Americans and low-income workers rely on. So we filed a, uh, a complaint in federal uh, district court in Columbus, um, stating that these cuts to early voting uh, equated to a violation of the Equal Protection Clause of the United States Constitution, uh, and that the cuts specifically to early voting uh, uh, burdened African Americans in uh, violation of Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. We had a very brief period of time before we filed our motion for preliminary injunction. Essentially what that means is that we asked the court to stop the law from going into effect for the November 2014 elections. Uh, we had a hearing on that in August and in early September Judge Economist of the uh, Columbus U.S. District Court uh, granted that motion for preliminary injunction. Uh, the state appealed that grant of an injunction and went to our regional federal circuit court, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. There, a, a panel of judges uh, 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 took briefs and issued a decision in late September um, which affirmed, uh, meaning it agreed with the, the lower court's decision and uh, kept that stay, kept that injunction against the cuts from early voting from going into effect. Not a day after, the state appealed that to uh, the, what's known as en banc court, meaning the full panel of the full bank of judges in the Sixth Circuit, as well as the Supreme Court of the United States. Uh, again, within several days after that, the Supreme Court of the United States uh, reversed the Sixth Circuit and did issue a stay, meaning that uh, the judge's order will not go into effect and that those cuts to early voting have been implemented uh, in Ohio. Now, what happened in Ohio between when this law was first put into effect? I know that it was because of the 2006 election, but what happened that, that changed it to make it so that they were eliminated? Sure. So what happened was um, uh, re reliance. You know, folks were able to uh, adapt 
and were able to use these times that were available to them, uh, meaning that there were shorter lines on election days, uh, meaning that more people were able to get out the vote. Um, it, it means that people that might not have been able to get to the polls on election day could have the opportunity to vote. Also, it, it meant quite a lot for um, the individual boards of elections uh, because they didn't have to worry so much about having those jammed polls right. on, on election day. So it benefited not only the voters, but it also benefited the boards of elections. Now, did the legislation, legislature change in Ohio? Is that what also what happened? The legislature, I, I do believe, did, did change. Also, the governorship changed. Um, as, as well, there was a change, um, uh, but uh, really I would say that the change was the, the reliance yeah. um, on, on these early So it was times. really about making, cutting back on voters. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And uh, especially it's a, certain voters. Right, it was a, it's, a, it's a form of voter suppression. Uh, by eliminating the time that African Americans and lower income individuals can vote, you are essentially uh, burdening their vote. You, you are causing them to, to take greater means to vote than, than other individuals. Now, the Supreme Court um, earlier voted down the Voting Rights Act, basically, or parts of it. That's right. So when you had to appeal it up to there, you know, were you optimistic? Did you feel like, you know, this was somehow different than what had been turned out before, or were you kind of figuring we're in trouble? You know, honestly, we, we, we just didn't know. You know, in Shelby County, the court dealt with Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, and, and we were, a, a, and we were a, a discussing Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, and this area of the law is not terribly developed. So at this point, we, we weren't entirely sure uh, what would occur. Uh, and unfortunately, it did not go our way. Now, recently, there was the decision regarding the um, voter ID. Is that something here, or is it something that you have here, or is that something that they are trying to put into effect in Ohio, or is that just in the other states? So voter ID has been uh, flirted with. The idea has been discussed for years, uh, several years. Um, I, I do know that, that this session, that there is an individual that has introduced a bill that would contain voter ID, but at, at this point we, we don't know where that's going to go. Yeah. Now it's very suspicious when all these states start implementing something all at one time. Is this one of those legislation bills that came out of ALEC? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, it, it certainly makes you curious, right? It makes you think, because you, you're you right. You're seeing the same types of cuts in, in states all across the country. So, it, yeah, it seems like it's a, a national agenda. Mm -hmm. and so, um, where do you go from here? Uh, right now, I, I think we, we, we consider all of our options. Uh, the case has been sent back down to the trial court, meaning that uh, we're free and clear to go forth on a trial.